So these are our three pigs. And uh, they are all female sows. Um, got them as wieners in the uh, late summer. A little later than we wanted to get them. Uh, they've sized up pretty nicely. And uh, I think we're gonna look uh, at a good end price per pound. So Draco's doing his first job ground guiding. Pay attention to your work, little bud. Oh, you see, we can wiggle it probably that far. But see how the ball's lower, or this is lower than the ball? So we need to make sure we crank this up a little bit. But see, that's close enough. You just get me to the balls underneath here, and we can kind of move it over a little bit as we lower it, okay? All right, bud. You're guiding, buddy. Do a good job. A little bit more, Draco. Good. Yep. Good. Good job, Draco man. So uh, this is the Ortega's big cabin tent. Uh, we've been using it on. We used it for rehearsal last night, and kind of a warmer meeting hall than the banquets for when we only want to run one little stove. Got this little stove, you know, got a little cooked up on it. So today we got set up for uh, processing in here. Um, I gotta tune all the knives. Sharp knives are key to this process and uh, important to what we're doing. It's good to butcher in the winter, have a lot of natural refrigeration going. So this is, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little place of action here. So we use my work scaffold to set up an overhead gantry to load the pigs out of the chute and uh, we'll get all three hung as a crew before the uh, uh, processors will start. Our processors today are Abby, Sarah and then our trainee Aaron and uh, so they'll be making the pieces for me to start on once they have one animal processed out here then Sarah will join me uh, mm -hmm has the other uh, cutter inside. Once they're all processed, Abby will join with Aaron, teach them some processing. We'll start turning the packages. Dan and Brenda work support staff on all of this, moving the meat and uh, packaging the meat and the whole nine yards. So anyway, um, Abby's got the first one blocked and roped between the back legs here. We'll put a spacer block in. And with a, with a cow or a larger pig, uh, I suppose to these yearlings, uh, space block, and we use a rope uh, with a chain hoist, and then we'll hook it. We'll hook it up to a side uh, situation. We'll get all three, all three hung. So she's making a block adjustment for going up. And away we go. So we do the full dressing from hung guts and everything. Gives us time to drain it. Uh, while we're working on it, we don't lose time because three pigs in a day is a, a good undertaking. And uh, when you're providing food for yourself, uh, you don't take your leisurely time to do stuff. You uh, are expeditious about it. Yeah, like so. I, see, I see what you mean about the test marks, Dan. Like where the lip cuts different. Yep. So these girls look like they <laughs> wanted to grow tusks. So as you can see, the spacing block between the rear legs. Uh, the rope tied. So our next step, we're going to get it up, and we'll get a, a, a blood collection bucket underneath. And then what we like to do before we open them up is we get a scrub brush out, and we give the pig a bath. And uh, wash them up, get them nice and clean before we start working on them. But we wash the meat a lot. In cold water, of course, don't ever wash it in warm water. It doesn't do you any good. Uh, so... Chain hoist is slow, but uh, it's uh, safe and easier, and we can, the same rig will hoist a cow and uh, whatever we need to do. So our next step, we're going to get it up, and we'll get a, a, a blood collection bucket underneath. And then what we like to do before we open them up is we get a scrub brush out, and we give the pig a bath. And uh, wash them up, get them nice and clean before we start working on them. We wash the meat a lot. In cold water, of course, don't ever wash it in warm water. 
doesn't do you any good. Uh, so, train hoist is slow, but uh, it's uh, safe and easier, and we can, the same rig will hoist a cow and uh, whatever we need to do. So, hook to the second rope, and swing it over to its spot, enough to get a bucket underneath it. Our cutters are short, no reason to be any higher than you need to be. So it swung over to hook position, no fuss, no muss, no lift, no fill. Pulling out the second one now. Uh, it's got a white stripe, called this one Oreo. This was our, it was a tough one in every batch and this one was the, uh, she's a tough one, good for her. Uh, a lot of respect, if anything it'll fight hard for itself. So. Like I said earlier, the kills went good. The trainee did well, and uh, he's adjusting good to it and uh, learning. And Draco went out on his first big kills today, and he's doing good and watching and learning and thinking about it. Nobody died except for the pigs. Yeah, nobody died except for the pigs. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. That's right. So, second one up. Hung. Get ready. We're gonna wash it down here shortly. Gonna drag the uh, third one up. Abby's got all prepped. I am when it comes to my kids. Me personally, I don't care if they fall. <laughs> So we're gonna give her the quick shoot, uh, the shoot a quick spray, and then uh, we're gonna wash the, before we open the pigs. We wash and scrub them down, get all the grime and the dirt and whatnot off of them before we start working on them. So uh, it's it's about 35 degrees right now. It'll get warmer today. We'll get up to 45 today. So it's a nice day uh, in January for it. Cold enough to keep the meat, but uh, warm enough not to freeze our hands. I think it's really sweet that uh, everybody uh, set up that uh, cabin tent and uh, we're going to do this outside in there so that I don't have to go in the house and not be in the house any more than uh, you know, the minimum compromises we've already discussed like the uh, breakfast time and such. So I think that's really cool everybody uh, wanting to do it in the camp. We did uh, a deer this last fall uh, by, you know, it was really a surprise deer. And, uh, we uh, did that in the camp, and uh, where we were camped, we had a, a, an event encampment, and so it was kind of neat just to, you know, had none of the tools, had none of the stuff together, but we just, you know, pulled what we had on our belts and got it pulled together and, uh, you know, processed that deer out fast, so it was a really neat adventure, so it's neat that everybody kind of wanted to do that again, so uh, it'll be a lot of fun here shortly. So we collect a lot of the wash water and we use it on our rose beds, because it doesn't uh, hurt them, doesn't bother them. Uh, one of the boys, Draco's buddy Kyrell's, running a little drain off ditch for what we can't get over to the, the rose beds. So, so head off the first pig. And everybody's opening up, teaching the trainee uh, our process for doing this. She's gonna want me to take this camera off here in a second because yeah, I'm messing with her so mojo. Sarah's over there taking the pig off the other one. So we move along with greater efficiency today. She sees ready. So she's trained and fairly well practiced the last couple of years coming along. So she's following the basically the jaw line around to remove the head. She'll get it down to spine and we'll go ahead and bone saw. Uh, we'll use a hand bone saw, not a powered saw, to uh, separate the spine. There's other ways to separate the spine as well. We'll head off the second pig. Aaron's working. The trainee's doing okay. Rough and slow, but that's uh, part of the patience you got to have. The, yes, this is food production. Yes, this is a you know economically invested thing for the the group. But without imparting the knowledge down the road a little bit more, uh, it won't it won't matter. So uh, Aaron's decided uh, he's going to save the pig skin off of the one uh, he shot this morning. And so we're going to run through some of that processing uh, stuff uh, over the next uh, a few weeks. So, uh, when it comes to knives, I'm really particular. Uh, I don't care for stainless. I got some in here because it's what I got. I prefer the antique, high carbon stuff. Uh, really, really, uh, stainless, uh, stainless steel is trash. And uh, most of the knives made are trash. 
They're made for people to uh, have a cute little set of knives on their kitchen counter uh, for when they order the uh, takeout food. You know, uh, they're not actually for people who work with meat all the time. Right there is, right here, uh, this is, <laughs> that's the stuff right there. That's the good stuff. You know. Right there. That's the good knives. Bud stained, old, and these I got as backups. Now, why do I need so many? No. Uh, I like them razor sharp, and when I'm cutting meat, I like them sharp. Sharp is accurate, accurate is fast, and efficient. So, uh, I like to keep, uh, I like to have a good starting stock of knives, and then uh, that way you can pick up and sharpen. I can keep everybody supplied while I cut. Because I do all the sharpening too as we go. So I'm so. starting on the uh, first front leg that come off to my table. Uh, my process uh, is uh, we get some roasts out. Uh, we slice a lot of roast in the steaks. We debone. Uh, the only thing we leave bones in is the ribs. Other than that, we debone. Uh, we collect all the little scraps for grinding, sausage making, whatever. Then I have a bowl for pieces too small, small to make steaks. Boy, it's blue on that blue tarp. It's hard to see. Uh, that's our stew, green chili, mulligan, stuff like that. Um, basically cubed steak. I have some stuff there to decide about. And then, uh, like I said, making pork steaks. We don't do uh, bone chopping, so there's no bone bits or chips um, in, in how we process. There will be people who disagree with that processing, and that's fine. You do it your way. We'll do it our way. This is how we get our pork for the year. <laughs> so uh, Sarah's down here now while they work on the other animals we got. Two down here, they're working on the third. And then Brenda's got her weighing and wrapping. We have freezer bag, uh, weigh, log, then freezer paper. Um, there are some packing sheds where you pay $5 a pound and they only wrap it in the paper. And the meat uh, does not keep worth a uh, damn. So there you go. Uh, anyway, like I said, our system we have, we separate out cuts, uh, get a little filet mignon in there. Uh, cutting some pork steaks and then we got a stew bowl over there and our grinder bowl that we're going to chill here and just start another grinder bowl and that way we get to maximum use out of all the meat and such. So this is the start of our little troops. This table will definitely be filled up by the time we're done and I'll probably be at the bottom of the table but this is our starting point for our packaging. They're all labeled and ready to go. So we got the little wood stove going and all of it's been quartered and separated the bone sections and so we're working and working up a pile of meat to uh, barrel cure and making the bacon. We have our different sorting processes going on. We're kind of on a, a rear leg over there and Watch Abby wrestle that meat. Wrestle that meat. Trainee's doing good. Really happy to have him out. Troops are starting to pile up outside. The, even the little guys help. They act as runners and go grab supplies and feed the fires. So, uh, that's about one pig's worth of packages. So, coming along nicely. So cutting my one pound, pound and a half uh, slabs for uh, the uh, brine curing uh, for uh, just a bunch of bacon. Got a big old pan of it over there too. And so I don't know, we're gonna end up with a lot of pounders of bacon. And uh, we're getting down on the pile. Pile's getting smaller. We got ribs to split over there and they're working on backs and loin there. And I'm making bacon slabs. Brennan and Kyrell got the packaging operation over here and Dan's running all kinds of errands for us so it's a really good team effort and uh, we had pizza tonight as our little in-between meal and and the dogs keep hovering hoping 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 we drop something please drop something Ruby says please so uh, a lot of fun having a good time so we got like 42 almost 43 pounds of bacon to put in the brine barrels and then all the little little meat package troops out here more meat package troops over there 
Get the moon coming up. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> and then we got more grind and no! more stuff to do, but we're getting cleaned up in here and relaxed and enjoying and <laughs> it's a good day. It's good a good day. A long day, but good day. So uh end of the day, we're just about cleaned up, a little bit right. to do. Check a pose, man. Trainee, first day. <laughs> uh, he did really good. Uh, he made his first kill this morning <laughs> and uh, hung in all day on this. He's gonna uh, tan his, start tanning his pig skin tomorrow. And uh, but out of our three pigs, we netted 352 and a quarter pounds of meat. We bone our meat, so that's meat. Um, our costs. Not that it's really anybody anybody's business, but it's less than half of what the equivalent pork would cost at the store. And that's including, that's including if we all paid ourselves uh, better than minimum wage to cut it. So everybody needs to cogitate that in their mind, that um, if you can do this for yourself, you definitely should. Because uh, even if we paid ourselves to do this, it's less than half what it costs at the store. So there you go, that's a good day, guys. Well done, our kid helpers. Uh, are uh, chilling out in the house and uh, that's a good day.